Yes, Patsy Stevenson was pinned to the ground and arrested by police officers after she attended the vigil in memory of Sarah Everard and in support of the movement around women's safety. And Patsy joins us now for her first live television interview. Um, very good morning to you, Patsy. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you for being with us. Uh, that photograph of you being pinned to the ground by police officers uh, has become a symbol, really, of what happened on Saturday night. But for you, it's not just a photograph. It's actually what happened. Why were police pushing you onto the ground, putting your hands behind your back and arresting you for what happened? I mean, to be honest, I still don't know um, why I was um, pushed to the ground so forcefully. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite small and it was, it was two very large male officers who sort of pulled me back very quickly as I hit the ground. Um, you know, from, from start to finish, it was just a sort of whirlwind. It happened very quickly. Um, and, you know, I was only there to lay a candle down. I did not expect that to happen. Tell us about Saturday. What time did you go to the vigil and what, what did you want to do in memory of Sarah Everard? Oh, so, I mean, um, you know, when I first heard about what was going on, of course, a lot of people um, wanted to go down because there had been videos um, recently um, on social media platforms saying that if, if there were no men for 24 hours, what would you do? And a lot of women came forward and said, well, I would walk the streets at night alone with my headphones in. And I thought how strange that every, you know, a lot of women are saying this and we can't, we don't have the freedom to do that. So I think this, you know, this was a, a thing that we all related to and we all wanted to pay respect. So um, I don't know what time I arrived, but when I did arrive, people were socially distancing. It wasn't massively, you know, packed or anything. Um, and some people were on the bandstand. Uh, there weren't a lot of people on the bandstand. There were a few women and they were talking into a speaker. Um, they were projecting their voices um, and then the police came in. Um, this seemed to be the point where everything changed because I think uh, anybody watching what happened seemed to see during daylight a very peaceful, respectful vigil mm. with, with at its heart honouring the life of Sarah Everard and reflecting yeah. on the terrible circumstances and, and people sharing their experiences. We saw the Duchess of Cambridge lay flowers and, and speak about her understanding. But then something happened after nightfall and it centred around the bandstand, which is in the middle of Clapham Common. And yeah. you were there on the bandstand, weren't you? There's pictures of you sort of kneeling, facing outwards. And there's a point, I think, we see police officers come over and, and speak to those of you who are on the edge of the bandstand. What did they say? So I'll go from what happened. So um, to, from us getting onto the bandstand, the reason we were on there was because police seemed to be, and we didn't know, we, we couldn't hear that well, but they seemed to be sort of aggressively talking to the women on the bandstand and there were quite a few police. So we were worried, you know, if there's anything going on here, do you know what I mean, we need to make sure everyone's safe. Um, so a few of the women said, can you come on because we need help. And I was like, of course. So a few people carefully moved flowers out of the way. We were very careful not to trample anything. You know, we were there for a reason. Um, and then we went onto the bandstand and we were trying to make sure, you know, video things and make sure no manhandling or anything was done. Um, but then, you know, all of a sudden there was, there was quite a few police on the bandstand. Now it was distance until the police came because on the bandstand there were about 30 police and they pushed us towards um, the edge of the banister that I was holding on to. Were they talking to you though, Patsy? Were they saying, look, we need you to disperse, we need you to get off the bandstand, we're gonna have to forcibly remove you if you don't leave? They did, but before that, they were saying quite a few things that, you know, were making people angry. Um, and, you know, I think women have sort of stood by and let things happen for long enough. And, and we all were sort of together. And, um, you know, I didn't expect for it to happen so quickly and everything to happen, but I was, you know, up against the bandstand. But as I was up against the bandstand, um, the railing, uh, we could see the, the women next to me, sort of one of them had, the police was trying to get around her neck. Uh, someone was being pulled back. So we were trying to sort of hold on to each other and be like, okay, it's fine, it's fine. And we were, we were terrified because, you know, we hear about 
police manhandling women and things like that. So. We've got the, uh, the footage of you being arrested on Saturday night. It does contain flash photography, so there's a warning for anybody at home. Have you watched this back? Have you been able to process what it looks like just as a bystander to see yeah. it, even though you're in there? What's of course, it? yeah, I've, I've watched it several times. You know, it's, it's absolutely everywhere you look. So, um, you know, at that moment, there is a police officer by the, by the side of me trying to pull my arm. And I, at one point, I pull it away. Um, he was saying, what's your name? Tell me your name, tell me your address. There was a guy in front of me giving me like a card saying, if you get arrested, have this. Um, and he said, don't say anything. You don't have to tell them your name. You don't. And I, I've never been arrested. I, I've never, you know, been to one of these things. I'm not like an activist or protester. So I just stood there and, and was like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. And I just tried to look to one side. I didn't want to retaliate. I didn't want to, you know, react to, mm. you know, any of it. So, yeah. And what did you feel in that moment? You're pinned Terrified. to the ground. There's police officers around you. Yeah. I, I was terrified. I've, I've never been so scared, honestly. It was, um, I think what was scary as well was as soon as I was pinned to the ground, I looked up and there were, you know, cameras everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is big. Like, I, I, I didn't realize they'd even pinned me to the ground for a second. It just so, it happened so fast. And then I was on the ground. I'm like, how have I got onto the ground? Like, I'm, I'm very small. I, I thought they were, I wasn't resisting or anything. I, you know. Did you have any concerns, Patsy, at any point about the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic and thousands of people, hundreds of people are going to turn up yeah. at Clapham Common? The focus was the bandstands and this, from a public health perspective, the police are in a, 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 an invidious position because they've got to try and implement the protocols and yet allow you to... Yeah, I fully understand that police have to do their job. Do you know what I mean? This isn't... I'm not against police, I'm not against people, but, um, you know, the organisers were trying to get it so that the police were involved in a safe way and make sure everyone was maintaining social distance. And all we wanted was for women to be able to mourn and, and share, you know, each other's company in a, in a safe space. Um, and it wasn't allowed to go ahead. So I think people were angry with that um, when it came out that we weren't allowed to. A lot of people were like, you know, we're, we're going because we're, we're going to make it safe. We did intend for a vigil, a safe vigil, so socially. Do you think if the police hadn't stepped in and started trying to force the women off the bandstand, then things would have dissipated? I know it was dark, it was getting colder. Mm. There wasn't any facilities there. Yeah, there was no public toilets or anything. You know, some of us had, had travelled a bit to get there. We weren't intending on staying long. Like I said, I literally was just going to put a candle down and some flowers and sort of, you know, show solidarity with other women, you mm. know, who have been affected. But I, I wasn't going to be there long and it just ended up staying, we ended up staying for quite a while because of the police were there, you know, and it turned very scary very quickly. I mean, that is absolutely not what should have happened no. on Saturday night. No, none of the women there should, have, should be saying that it turned scary mm. yeah. because of what happened with the police. I mean, that is absolutely counter to yeah. what the police would want. Of course. And it's absolutely not what the women would want because yeah. we need to feel protected. We do. Particularly, you know, considering the circumstances. Yeah. What is your message to Dame Cressida Dick, who is the head of the Metropolitan Police, and says, as, as a woman, she's more determined than ever to, to fix things? Yeah. Um, you know, as someone who does stand up for women's rights and things like that, I, I don't have... Um, it's not that I don't have an opinion, but to be honest, I think we need to get the message away from we're against the police and the mm -hmm. police did wrong mm -hmm. and focus on the main message, which is that we now need to open a dialogue for change and to support women's safety. You know, this needs to happen now, you know. And what is your message to Sarah Everard's family? Because absolutely at the heart of this yeah. is the loss of their daughter, niece. Of course. Yeah, I just, I cannot understand what they're going through, you know, and what we wanted to do was show our respect and, and support and, you know, we're all terribly saddened that it happened. There was um, all sorts of rumours suddenly swirl around what was going on and you personally, because you've become the focus because of the extraordinary pictures that were taken, some people suggesting that you're an actress. And yeah. This is about a profile thing. That's not the case, though, is it? Not at all. Um, I, I understand, you know, social media is a very fast thing and people are going to search your name and things. That was an old profile from years and years back. Um, I'm not hired by anyone. I just wanted to put a candle down. Um, I'm not an actress. I study at university, um, you know, where I, I also 
like try and um, I, I'm an ambassador for like women in STEM and women in physics and things like that. So, you know, that's why this was so important. And it still is like, you know, the message is very important and, and needs to be ongoing. And what do you think, Patsy, can be done to make women feel safer? I think um, to address that, that's a very like poignant mark in how to change things. Um, you know, I'm not um, a professional, I'm not a specialist, but I think the dialogue has now been opened and we need to come together as, you know, as a society mm. and make sure that everyone is talking to each other about their experiences and how they can change themselves. We need to educate people on how they can change and what we can do together, you know, and, and that's how it comes about. And what was the outcome for you finally of Saturday night? What, at what point were you released? What did you receive a, a fine? Yeah, I, I was released very quickly. So I wasn't sure what to do. They asked for my, my name in that in the van and I wasn't sure whether I, I was supposed to give my details mm -hmm. then or they said, I will take to the station and get your details there. I just didn't want to waste any more, like, I don't know, um, any more time sort of, you know, doing other things. So I, I just like gave them my, my details and they said, you'll be fined. I wasn't really sure why I was arrested because I, you know, I was stood there sort of doing nothing uh, in a way. But I, you know, um, I was let out sort of 20 minutes after. Mm. And then after that, I, I was given a fine of 200 pounds, which I appreciate as well. A lot of people have said they'll pay for it. For it. Right. I appreciate that fully, but I put myself in that position and like that Tape comes down to me. Yeah, completely. It's, it's two days later. Um, how are you feeling now in the aftermath of everything? It's been a whirlwind. It has been like, you know, um, there have been times where I've thought, you know, I don't want to be in, in the center of this and, you know, and go viral. But at the same time, I just think of all the women that don't have a voice. So, you know, I need, I need to do this and I need to make sure the message is spread that women's safety is a priority right now. And we need to, we need to try and change things. It's emotional for you. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think it's emotional for a lot of people, you know. And it must have been for your family and friends seeing those pictures of you as yeah. well. That must be tough. I did let them know as soon as it happened. I did, um, I did message all of them and say, I'm safe, I'm fine, you know, because I didn't want anyone to worry. Sure. But, um, you know, it just one thing after the other. And then suddenly I was, I was everywhere. And I just, yeah, it's been absolute madness. To be honest. It shouldn't have happened like that. No. Saturday night should not have gone it like should. that. And we're going to discuss that. Um, after this. Patsy Stevenson, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, thank you. Patsy. you.